Turn with you in your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 1. I want to read verses 1 through 5 from the New International Version of the Bible. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead and from all the brothers and sisters with me. To the churches in Galatia, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. On this first Sunday in this new year, I want to preach from the subject, God's gift of grace. God's gift of grace. We are here by God's grace. Not one of us has earned the privilege, the right to see this brand new year. Yet by God's grace, we have been granted access to a year that we have never seen before. This access has been granted by God's grace. See, that is what I want to talk about over the next several weeks through a study of God's grace from the book of Galatians. The message we see introduced in the opening verses of Galatians chapter 1 help us to understand the implications of God's grace. If we are to be faithful in reaching people for God and equipping believers in the faith and sending disciples to serve, we must have a good appreciation of God's grace. See, grace will help us to understand and appreciate our journey and better inform our conclusions about the shortcomings of others. See, when we understand grace, we will choose our words better and exercise greater restraint in judgment when others fail to live up to our expectations. So today I want to talk about God's gift of grace. God's gift of grace. We, we see that gift in our text today. Again, the first five verses of Galatians chapter one serve as a greeting or salutation for the entire letter. For many of us, a greeting is just a formality that doesn't provide much information or significance. In this day of social media and text messaging, we, we don't spend much time developing elaborate and formal greetings. But back in the old days, somebody remembers the old days before email, before texting, before Facebook, before Twitter, before IG, before all that we see today, we used to communicate by writing on paper, writing letters on paper. Let letters would typically begin with an addressee, who the letter is written to. And then you would find the body of the letter, the message contained therein. And then at the very end, you will find a signature to signify or to identify who the author is, who wrote the letter. In this letter and in the letters that Paul writes and, and most of the letters in the New Testament, the identity of the author is placed at the very beginning. You know who is writing before the message is read. In Galatians 1.1, we are informed that the author of this letter is Paul. And further, we are informed of his credentials, his qualifications, and his authorization to deliver the message contained in this letter. See, that is important because when someone speaks or writes in an official capacity, qualifications matter. See, it is important because those that receive the information being communicated must make decisions based on the information received that may impact their lives. See, bad information can lead to bad results and even death. That's why we need good information from qualified people who are able to speak truth and, and, and communicate clearly information that is germane and important to our existence. Whether it be a pandemic or a national crisis or even a personal crisis, 
Credible information is needed for those that must make decisions about their situations. Paul makes it clear in this text that, that his presence and message is not a result of his own initiative. He is there with a message because he has been authorized and set apart by Jesus Christ and God the Father. See, some people like to brag and boast about their accomplishments. They believe that, that they are the best thing since sliced bread. If you let them tell it, and they will insist on you letting them tell it. They singularly have all the answers to all the problems in the world. But then there are others that will confess and admit that, that we are only here because of God's gift of grace. We didn't make all the right decisions. We weren't in always in the right place at the right time. At times, we were even stubborn and resistant to the will of God or what God desired to do in our lives. Yet, we are here by God's gift of grace. See, Paul was clear on the reason for his presence and the message he would deliver. He was on assignment from God. See, the greeting not only identifies the author, Paul, but also identifies the recipients. See, the letter was written to the churches of Galatia. See, there, there was more than just one church. See, that there were churches spread out throughout the Roman province of Galatia. See, they were in different places, but under the influence of the Roman Empire. See, see, the empire had influence and, and, and could impact the way that they existed and served in their community. See, each church had to face the challenges of their environment. And in some cases, it was resentment, while in others, it was persecution simply because they dared to be different and responsive to the call of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, these were congregations that Paul had planted in his missionary journey travels when they accepted the good news, the gospel message. Though they may have varied experiences in their location, the purpose of the letter was to deal with a shared problem and concern. See, there were issues and concerns plaguing these churches that needed to be addressed, and Paul writes to confront them. They heard the word, they accepted the word, but now pressure is mounting and they're, 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 they're trying to, to judge and determine whether they would compromise on the word that they had received because of their present circumstance. See, they began to waver in their faith. And so Paul responds with this letter to meet them in their faith struggle. It was through this confrontation that Paul conveyed to them the gift of God's grace. See, for some of us, the challenges of pro and problems of 2020 have carried over to 2021 and, and, and may have you wondering and struggling about your faith. You may even wonder where God is in this pandemic. You may even wonder where God is uh, when, when, another, when more unarmed Black men are shot and killed by police. You may even wonder where God is when a father and son can't spend time together without being accused of stealing a cell phone that was later found left in an Uber. See, let, let me suggest, when you're tempted to give up and yield to the pressure, remember the gift of God's grace. Let, let me show you some things about grace for us to embrace as we begin this new year. First, the gift is proactive. Look at Galatians 1.3. Grace is God's unmerited favor. I, I want to remind you again that grace is God's unmerited favor. It is the benefit of receiving something that we did not deserve. But because of the saving and interceding work of Jesus Christ, we get the blessings of his sacrifice. See, understanding grace means understanding that we are beneficiaries and recipients of the many blessings and good things that come our way, things that we can determine and testify that we know we don't deserve. Come on, let me ask the question. Have you ever received something good that you know you didn't deserve? 
come on, this may be a good time for some of you to look, look at your, smile, your spouse and smile. See, see, not only does God, does, does Paul talk about grace, but he also talks about peace. See, peace denotes a state of wholeness and freedom that the grace of God brings. See, because of the gift of God's grace, they have peace from God. The peace of God will keep you in times of chaos and confusion. The peace of God will keep you in times of storm. The peace of God will keep you in the midst of a crisis. The peace of God will show up even when all around you is stressed out. There's something about the peace of God that enables us to keep our focus. See, though Paul had issues and concerns with these churches, he first talks about the grace and peace that has been given to them. He helps them to know what they possess and what possesses them. See, Paul has some concerns that he must address and keep them focused on their mission and their assignment. But he first reminds them of what they already have in their possession. See, the message is don't forget what you have. Don't forget about the grace and peace that God has already given you. We don't know what this new year will bring. I, I, I suspect that, that there may be some challenges along the way. That there may be some heartache along the way. That there may be some disappointment along the way. So some of us may need to be redirected so we don't mess up our testimony in this new year. Don't forget about the proactive gift of God's grace. But second, note that the gift is personal. The gift is personal. Look, look again at Galatians 1, 3, chapter 1, verse 3. See, not only is grace and peace given, but the text specifically says, grace and peace to you. Gra grace and peace to you. See, the you in Galatians chapter 1, verse 3 is directed to the churches of Galatia. He is speaking directly to them about their needs and their concerns. These words of assurance speak to what they needed to hear at that moment. See, though they had some issues and are struggling with, and though they have some problems and concerns that must be dealt with, Paul's greeting invokes words that will help them to remember what the Lord has already done for them. Grace and peace to you. In other words, God has already responded. God has already addressed. God has already spoken and given you something. It's already in your possession. See, these words help to inform them that God speaks personally to our circumstances. That, that's a message that we also need to hear. That God is not just speaking generally, but God speaks personally to our circumstances. God, God, God speaks personally to the issues that we wrestle with. God speaks personally to the things that, that, that grip us at times and, and even challenge our faith. God speaks personally. See, that's the evidence of God's grace and God's peace. It, 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 see, I don't, I don't mean to be repetitive, but, but can anyone testify that you're here by God's grace? See, when you look at where you have been and some of the decisions that you made and some of the people that you spent time around that, that had agendas that were questionable at best. But here you are on this first Sunday in 2021. Can, can we testify together that we are here by God's grace? See, may, maybe you, you can thank God for the peace you have. You know, you are living in a dysfunctional house and working at a dysfunctional job and, 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 and in a dysfunctional relationship, living in a, in a country with dysfunctional leadership, yet you have peace, not because you've made all the right decisions, but because God is good and you have the gift of God's grace and God's peace. God's personal gift of grace and peace is in your possession. But the final thing I would share with us is the gift is purposeful. The gift is purposeful. 
See, the gift of God's grace is the result of God's intervention in our circumstances. Look, look, look at Galatians 1, 4, chapter 1, verse 4. See, the Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins to set us free. See, he sacrificed himself in order that grace and peace would be available to us. See, he, he, he sacrificed himself so that we might be set free from this present evil age, according to the will of God, our Father. See, th this wasn't an accident. It was the purposeful plan of God. God intentionally made Jesus available to us so that we might be set free. See, the gift of God's grace reminds us of the love that God has for us. It was God's purpose to send Jesus through 42 generations to remedy our sin. It was God's purpose to send Jesus to rescue us from our circumstances of this world. It was God's purpose to provide a remedy for our dysfunction. And so we celebrate today God's gift of grace, that grace that shows up in the midst of our dysfunction. See, too many of us are living in bondage when the Lord has come to set us free. Too many of us are stuck in a myriad of circumstances that are draining life from us. See, when you find yourself struggling and facing a loss of direction, I simply wanted you to remember, remember God's gift of grace. For God's gift is proactive. God's gift of grace is personal, and God's gift of grace is purposeful. I'm glad for God's gift of grace, for it is truly that amazing grace that we sing about. How, how, how many know that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we would not have made it to see this day? If it had not been for God's proactive, personal, and purposeful grace, we wouldn't be here right now. I pray that you would hear this message and allow it to speak to you and encourage you when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place. Amen and amen. We want to extend an invitation to discipleship to you, that if you're here today, and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, we want to invite you to accept him, to allow him to come in and be a part of your life. See, the Bible simply tells us that all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. We've all done something. We've all been there and done that. But I'm glad that we serve a God who's available to us and meets us right where we are. And so we invite you to accept Jesus as your savior by simply yielding to him. And we also want to extend an invitation that if you don't have a church home, what a, what a perfect way to start a new year is by having a relationship with God's people and walking together as we seek to be faithful. You can let us know of your decision to accept Jesus as your savior or your desire to become a part of the Mount Tabor Baptist Church by dialing 804-643-0903. 804 804-643 0903. You can also go to our website at mymtbc.org. A slide will come on the screen in just a moment that will provide this information. We pray that as you have received this message, that you will also experience God's gift of grace. May God bless you and may God keep you.